Hello guys, I'm Peter from Build a Boeing. It's December outside, as you can see, there's snow all over. I am uh, very slowly changing my pedestal from my old nine years old DIY panels that I made myself to something that's a bit more plug and play. I've been using the DIY panels together with the open cockpit master cards and uh, display cards and well, I've never really been totally satisfied. So that's why I'm slowly changing to uh, plug and play units. Right now I have a plug and play unit from uh, from an app radio from open cockpits, but also one from CP flight laying around that I'm about to put into the pedestal. And I thought I'd just use a few minutes to show you the differences between the two uh, panels so that uh, if at some point you're going with a um, plug and play solution, you can see the differences. So let's see how the open cockpits and CP flight radios work. Here we have three different panels. Over here, this is my DIY panel. This is open cockpits and this is CP flight. Um, I'm gonna run through each of them, but here you can see them compared. My home built panel is from a company called ProSim Parts. And this is nine years old and I've been using it a lot in my pedestal. So all the different scratch scratches here and dirt and scratches from me uh, putting in place and taking the screws out again, that has nothing to do with ProSim parts. That's something to do with me using it for nine years and moving it around. But of course, your DIY panel is going to reflect, first of all, the quality of the um, of the panels that you buy. These were 200 and I reckon at that point 230 euros for the entire pedestal, including VAT in Europe. Whereas an open cockpit module like this is 180 euros just, just for this one module and the CP flight is 250 euros for just one module. So price and quality, of course, there's a connection there. If you were buying an open cockpit uh, pedestal, you would perhaps get something that looks a bit more like this. Okay, this is one of the cheaper versions of panels and it's nine years old. There's a lot of a lot has happened in the last nine years. Now you get better quality for the same price. Here you have three millimeter clear uh, plexiglass and then acrylic, white acrylic. The engraving is actually quite good. I don't know if you're able to see. There we are. The engraving is very good. And there's a bit of a difference in the location of the test button. You can see from there, here it's a bit lower and over here on CP flight. It's low, but it's smaller. So that's a bit, I don't know, there's a bit of a difference. On the back, that of course depends on how you interface your radio. I'm interfacing with uh, open cockpit master card and display cards, which is why I need all these uh, connectors because they are going to the interface cards inside the pedestal. You could use, do this using a, um, or a small Arduino mounted on the back of this board, and then you just need a USB cable, but of course that's up to you what you choose to do. Furthermore, my enclosure here is just electrical tape that could be done nicer as well, but it keeps all the electron, all the wires inside uh, from being exposed to when moving around. It doesn't shift around inside here. Things come loose. This is the open cockpit panel and it is made from three pieces of acrylic, one transparent, a small one, about one and a half millimeters, and then a three millimeter here, white acrylic as well. And you can see that the digits is behind the first layer here. There's a hole going through, and it, I'm showing you this because it's different on the CP flight. The engraving is nice. Um, the screws are good looking. The quality of the paint job here compared to over here. Here is a bit more, not much, but just a bit more glossy. And here is a more powderish or matte finish. And it, it feels and looks very good. One thing with these open cockpits is that all the electronics are exposed. You can see here, you can see the electronics, you can touch them. And as you will see when I mount them in the pedestal, the LEDs here, they light up, but they also light outside the panel. On the back, you have a USB connection and you just connect it directly to your computer. You might uh, need some kind of SIOC scripting to make it work. It's not plug and play, 
but it is not a very hard job to uh, to get it working but it's not like a joystick that you just plug in and then your computer recognizes it's uh, you have an app radio installed you need SIOC the program SIOC and depending on what kind of simulation software you use you might have a bit of work there last but definitely not least the CP flight radio this is a very neat unit for your pedestal it is enclosed in a small metal box. It's not very deep. And compared to open cockpits directly, the main differences are that here the panel is flush. Uh, the, the display is flush with the panel. The screws are uh, sunk into the panel. There's an, uh, many other differences, but that's the visual differences. And here this is made from a sandwich of three pieces of acrylic, as I mentioned before. You can see there, whereas CP Flight just takes it that step further and uses an aluminium backplate and then a thick piece of acrylic here. And that's, that's just a step up in quality with all the metal here. Furthermore, it feels like uh, this is a bit harder acrylic. Perhaps it's the paint job or perhaps it's the material. I don't know. This just feels harder than what you have here with open cockpits. And actually, this just feels like it'll scratch more easily. And if you look up here, I've already scratched it a bit uh, using it, whereas this feels more sturdy. Um, I don't know what it is. And there's like half a millimeter of clearance between the metal and the panel. So you will not scratch the panel. You'll scratch this metal before you scratch the panel. That's very well thought of. One problem, though, with the CP flight module is that it's not a standalone module. This you can connect using USB, as I mentioned before, and you're more or less good to go. With CP flight, on the back here, you have a jumper for the first officer side or the captain side, and then you have these DIN cables, and you need a DIN cable, it looks like this, five pole cable. You need that to connect it here, and then it has to go to a CP flight autopilot unit. You cannot connect it directly to your computer. You do need that CP flight autopilot in order to use this uh, this module. So the CP flight autopilot unit is the brain of the whole CP flight ecosystem and you need that in order to use this radio. This is not standalone. Once you have that autopilot, you connect the cable to the autopilot and then it comes perhaps to EFIS and from there you connect it into this. And then if you have, let's say, a calm radio, you connect the cable from here to your calm radio over there. And that way you daisy chain all the, uh, the modules. But you do need that CP flight autopilot unit. You can use whichever they have. And sometimes you're able to get it used uh, fairly cheap, but you need that autopilot unit. Very, very nice unit here in metal and very rounded corner and just good looking. I don't know what else to say. I'm very impressed. So let's take them into the pedestal and see what they look like once they are on. The radios are now in the pedestal and here we have the open cockpits and here we have CP flight. I'm gonna do a bit of comparing between these two, but not my DIY panels because the quality of your DIY panels comes down to to your own build. If you're using a uh, 76 displays from open cockpits, it'll look the same. You can use dual encoders. You can use tinted film here. You can uh, interface with Arduino. You can interface with open cockpits and whatever you choose, things are gonna be different. So I'm just gonna compare these two out of the box panels, open cockpits and CP fly. And the very first thing you'll notice is the difference in coloring. And it's not that uh, visible in real life as it is here on the video, but be aware, Color differing in your pedestal should be something you embrace. Here I have an OEM panel uh, from a real aircraft and the same up here and you can see they're not the same either. They're different as well. So having different colors here shouldn't be an issue. What else? Well, the CP flight and the uh, open cockpits. First of all, the, the numbering here, I've done this video around 20, 30 times because it looks blurred. It looks a bit fussy here with the numbering and it's flickering up here. That is due to the camera. Here on the open cockpits, the numbering is very 
very bright, it, it, it's very sharp. There's no fuss in it at all. And the same up here with the CP flight. And in real life, it's not flickering. You have a bit of flickering here. Well, that's due to the camera. It's not due to the panels. They both look very good. The open cockpits, uh, there's a bit more intensity in the numbering there. Um, it's a bit brighter than, than on the CP flight, but they both look good. I would say CP flight just looks a bit better, but when you have them uh, across here, you you wouldn't really notice the difference, I reckon. One thing I did notice is here the six and the nine doesn't have the, the top leading and the bottom uh, digit was well, segment as you do here. I like that better. On the backlighting, the backlighting on the CP flight is more evenly distributed, but However, you're able to see the backlighting through the display here from the seven segment units. That's a bit of a shame. But down here, the backlighting isn't as evenly distributed. Here you can see the wire there isn't as bright as the test part down here. So that's a bit of a, sh of a shame. Now the test part here doesn't blind me. It looks so on the video, but it's just normal uh, backlit, but uh, a bit bright though, but not as blinding as it might appear on the video. So that's the main differences in the visual part of the panels. And now they're next to each other, so it's very easy to see the differences. If they were placed across the pedestal, you wouldn't notice um, most of the differences. And again, let me just stress, the flickering is due to the video, and the, the fussiness and the number here is due to the video. It looks very sharp and very steady. One thing I did notice, though, and that might be due to my uh, setup, is a bit of a lag on the open cockpit units. Here, if I turn uh, the knob, you can see it reacts right away, and by each dent I turn it, it changes the value. Down here on open cockpits, there's a bit of a, I don't know why that happens, it just goes up and down a bit. If I turn it quickly, it doesn't change all the, all the numbers along the way, it just ends up at something. And that makes it a bit difficult to find the right frequency. There you can see it went from 75 to 70 and then to 80. Up here, you don't have that. So it might be due to my setup. I've got flight sim on one computer, then I've got ProSim on a second computer, and this panel is connected to a third computer using SIOC Direct and ProSim, but really it shouldn't be an issue. Um, in ProSim you can see the, the lag or the, the response times and there shouldn't be an issue with that. But I have the same with this panel. You can see there's a bit of a lag and it doesn't go through all the numbers and that's open cockpits as well. If you have another experience with open cockpits, please let me know. Please send a comment below so that people uh, can hear from others how open cockpits react. But at least in my cockpit, I do have a bit of a lag here with the open cockpit panels. One last thing, as you saw before, this is enclosed in uh, in metal. This isn't, so this is open cockpit as well. When I lift it up, you can see all the backlighting flooding out from the panel. And, well, I don't know if we should call it polluting, but all the light you can see here is from the panel shining out uh, through to the other parts of the pedestal. And if you're using open cockpits, I would consider... Um, enclosing it a bit so that the light doesn't shine out through the other parts. That's the comparison of the uh, radio units. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care. Bye-bye.